In this lecture, we will see a feedback amplifiers. Amplifiers are used with feedback to get uh, some uh, good performance. If uh, negative feedback is used uh, to increase the stability of the circuit, so that the surrounding conditions must not change the uh, operation of the circuit, and on the other side the positive feedback is used in, or in order to increase the gain of the circuit so that uh, it can be used as an oscillator or in other applications. A feedback as earlier discussed are of uh, two types. One is negative feedback and other is positive feedback now we'll see exactly what is a negative feedback suppose we have this amplifier and in this amplifier it is amplifying the input applied to it and it is available at the output now feedback is basically taking the output and it will be processed by a feedback network and again added to the input now when the feedback signal which is added to the input that is VF if this feedback signal and this input signal VI both are 180 degrees out of phase suppose this is the waveform for input and this is the waveform for output and if the waveform for the feedback signal is like this there is 180 degrees phase shift between the input signal and feedback signal if feedback signal and input input signal are added with 180 degrees phase shift between them then this type of feedback is called negative feedback and in negative feedback if the gain of the amplifier is a and the gain of feedback network is beta or called feedback factor then the overall gain of the amplifier is defined as gain with feedback AF equal to A upon 1 plus A beta now the second feedback second, second type of feedback is positive feedback Now, if this is an amplifier feedback network, if input VI is amplified by the amplifier and this amplified version will be processed through this feedback amplifier and will be added to the input, if this is the waveform for input, this is the waveform for output and if this is the waveform for this feedback signal now it is it can be seen that the input signal and this feedback signal both are in phase so when output signal is fed back to the input in phase of the input then this type of feedback is called positive feedback and if the gain of amplifier is a gain of feedback network is beta also called feedback factor then the overall gain of the amplifier is defined as a f equal to a upon 1 minus a beta this is the overall gain of the positive feedback uh, an amplifier with positive feedback now we'll see the effects of or advantages disadvantages of negative feedback negative feedback is used in the amplifiers in order to increase the stability of the amplifier but the greatest or biggest disadvantage of the negative feedback is gain of the amplifier decreases for an amplifier for an amplifier 
if you plot its gain with respect to frequency normally this curve is obtained we'll explain this curve later in the multi-stage amplifiers in rc coupled amplifiers so if you obtain this curve this is the gain of the amplifier and here the gain is a by root 2 it cuts the graph at two different frequencies this is called lower cutoff frequency this is upper cutoff frequency and the difference is called the bandwidth of the amplifier now if we apply negative feedback to this amplifier for an amplifier this gain a and this bandwidth the product is always constant now if we apply the negative feedback to, to this amplifier gain of the amplifier decreases so we get this graph like this this is the maximum gain with feedback and these are the two cutoff frequencies and now this will be the new bandwidth with feedback so as gain bandwidth is a product is constant so with the decrease in gain bandwidth of the amplifier increases so this was the first effect that that the gain of the amplifier decreases with negative feedback the next effect is bandwidth of the amplifier increases with negative feedback if negative feedback is applied bandwidth of the amplifier increases number three the greatest advantage of this negative feedback is stability of the circuit increases or stability of the amplifier increases when with the application of negative feedback we can increase the stability of the amplifier number four noise in the amplifier decreases noise with feedback after feedback the noise in the amplifier is nof and with without feedback the noise in the amplifier is no it will be reduced by the factor one upon one plus a beta next is distortion in the amplifier decreases here we are talking about the uh, harmonic distortion suppose it is an a uh, transistor amplifier if you have the input a sin omega t then a transistor amplifier uh, may generate an output like this beta 0 plus beta 1 sin of omega t plus beta 2 sin of twice omega t plus beta 3 sin of 3 omega t and this output this is the dc part and this is the desired output because we are using this amplifier for amplification only so it should amplify the input signal input is a sin omega t so the amplitude will be changed amplitude is beta 1 and rest of the part of the signal is like uh, as it is but apart from this output it is generating some other part other components also so this is the dc part this is desired output called fundamental component fundamental component of output and the other parts like this all other parts the other components in the output are called harmonics and if any amplifier generate these harmonics we can define the harmonic distortion the first is second harmonic distortion second harmonic distortion and this second harmonic distortion is defined as d2 equal to beta 2 upon beta 1 then third harmonic distortion 
थर्ड हार्मोनिक डिस्टोर्शन इक्वल टू डी थ्री इक्वल टू बीटा थ्री अपॉन बीटा वन देन फोर्थ हार्मोनिक डिस्टोर्शन डी फोर इक्वल टू बीटा फोर अपॉन बीटा वन फिफ्थ हार्मोनिक डिस्टोर्शन लाइक दिस वी कैन डिफाइन मेनी हार्मोनिक डिस्टोर्शन देन टोटल हार्मोनिक डिस्टोर्शन डिस्टोर्शन डी इक्वल टू अंडर रूट ऑफ डी टू स्क्वायर प्लस डी थ्री स्क्वायर प्लस डी फोर स्क्वायर एंड सो ऑन दिस इज द टोटल हार्मोनिक डिस्टोर्शन नाउ वेन वी अप्लाई दी नेगेटिव फीडबैक टू दी एम्पलीफायर the harmonic distortion second harmonic distortion with feedback becomes d2 upon 1 plus a beta third harmonic distortion is d3 upon 1 plus a beta and the total harmonic distortion with feedback df equal to d upon 1 plus a beta now in this total harmonic distortion the major contribution is due to second harmonic distortion so uh, uh, many times in the problem only second harmonic distortion is given and this second harmonic distortion is considered as the total harmonic distortion now the effects of positive feedback we have seen the effects of negative feedback the positive feedback effect are reverse that of uh, negative feedback first is gain increases second as gain increases bandwidth decreases next is stability decreases circuit becomes more stable more unstable then noise increases and distortion increases these are the uh, effects of positive feedback which are reverse to that of uh, effects of negative feedback now we'll see types of amplifiers in the electronics paper electronics gate paper uh, nearly 3 4 times questions are uh, have been asked on this types of amplifiers there are four types of amplifiers that we'll study we are interested in the input and output impedances of these amplifiers the first type will be voltage amplifier second will be current amplifier third will be trans conductance amplifier and last will be trans resistance amplifier now first voltage amplifier what is voltage amplifier a voltage amplifier is the one uh, which amplifies the input voltage and generates output in the form of voltage so a voltage amplifier will have an input voltage vi or input voltage vs and output voltage v not for this amplifier the gain will be defined av equal to v not upon vs now we'll design a voltage amplifier the basic structure of a voltage amplifier will be like this this is input source and this is source resistance rs and now the amplifier starts this is the imp internal impedance of this 
or input impedance of this voltage amplifier while here will be a generator this generator will generate a voltage depending on the voltage drop across this resistance and this will be the output impedance of this voltage amplifier and here will be the load resistance in this this part of the circuit is a voltage amplifier and other components are connected from the outside now this is the gain of the amplifier and it will be desired that gain should be as high as, uh, as high as possible for that the output must be as high as possible this is the output will be taken across this load resistance now here uh, clearly seen that this output voltage depends on this voltage generated by this generator if a generator generates a large voltage will get a large voltage at the output and the voltage generated by this generator gen, uh, depends on the voltage across this load this input resistance ri so uh, we'll now try to make the output voltage as high as possible so that gain of this amplifier will be high now for vi to be very large this resistance ri should be very very greater than this voltage rs so for a voltage amplifier ri should be very very greater than rs so that a large voltage will be dropped across this resistance ri and ideally for an ideal voltage amplifier this ri is equal to infinite now once the large voltage is dropped across ri this generator will generate a large voltage now we will try to uh, uh, drop the large part of this generated voltage across the load resistance for this r not should be very very less than load resistance that uh, then only the large part of the generated voltage will be able to drop across this load resistance rl so ideally this r not should be equal to zero so these are the input and output impedance requirement for a voltage amplifier these conditions are asked in the gate examination uh, one or two times in the electronics paper now the second amplifier is current amplifier in the current amplifier input will be in the form of current and output will also be in a form of current so it the current gain of the amplifier will be the ratio of output current by input current is the basic circuit for a current amplifier will be like this the source resistance will be in parallel to the current source and this will be the input impedance of the current amplifier and now there will be a generator which will generate a current and the generated current depends on the current through this input resistance and the resistance output resistance will be in parallel to this generator r not and there will be a load resistance through which we will note the output voltage this is this part of the circuit is the current amplifier now we'll try to keep this current gain as high as possible for that output current must be as high as possible so for output current to be large this generator must generate a large current and the generated current depends on this i i current so we'll now try to make this i i as large as possible for that the input impedance r i should be as small as possible r s because current follows a low resistance path always so uh, if this current amplifier is ideal then r i is equal to zero now once the large current is generated this generator will 
deliver a current I naught at the load resistance. For I naught should be as large as possible, we will keep this R naught should as large as possible with respect to RL, so that large current will flow through the load resistance RL. And ideally, ideally, this output resistance R naught for a current amplifier is infinite. So that the total whole current will flow through the load resistance RL and current gate will be very high. Now the third type of amplifier is transconductance amplifier. A transconductance amplifier is the one which takes voltage as input and generate current as current as output for a transconductance amplifier is its gain is defined as gm and it is the ratio of output current by input voltage it is the transconductance gain of the transconductance amplifier the structure the amplifier structure will be simple uh, and will be combination of current amplifier and voltage amplifier on the input side there will be a voltage so we'll apply a voltage Vs for voltage source the source resistance will be in series and this is the input impedance of the amplifier Ri. Now the depending on the voltage dropped across this input resistance depending on the voltage dropped across this input resistance a generator will generate a current given by gm into vi and a part of this generated current will be delivered to the load rl this will be the load current rl this will be the output impedance of the amplifier now this part of the circuit is the current amplifier now in this current amplifier if you want to uh, have this transconductance gain as large as possible so that uh, for that this i naught current is required to be large if i naught is required large this generator must generate a large current and the generated current depends on VI so we'll try to make this VI as large as possible for that RI should be very very greater than RS and ideally ideally this RI equal to infinite now once the large current is generated the large part of this generated current should be delivered at the load for that R0 should be very very greater than RL so that low resistance path will be there at the load resistance so for if this amplifier is ideal then R0 will be equal to infinite now the last type of the amplifier is trans resistance amplifier trans resistance amplifier in the trans resistance amplifier the gain will be denoted by rm and it will be the ratio of output voltage by input current now the on the input side there will be a current source is and source resistance will be in parallel this will be the input impedance of the amplifier the current through this input impedance will have effect on this generated voltage rm into v i i and now this will be the output impedance of the amplifier this will be the load resistance 
now again we will try to keep the trans resistance gain as high as possible for that we will have to keep this voltage output voltage v not across the load resistance as high as possible for that the generated voltage will be should be as high as possible and now if you want to keep this ii as large as possible for that ri should be very very less than rs and ideally it is zero next once the generator generates a very large voltage uh, sorry sorry this output resistance for voltage generator will be in series a large part of the generated voltage will be delivered across the load resistance for that this output resistance must, must be as small as possible uh, as compared to this load resistance and ideally ideally it must be zero so r not equal to zero now we'll compare all the amplifiers simultaneously first is voltage amplifier second is current amplifier third is trans conductance amplifier fourth is trans resistance amplifier input impedance output impedance now if uh, voltage amplifier is there we know that input impedance is required infinite and output impedance required zero if current amplifier is there the condition are reversed current uh, input impedance is zero output impedance is infinite for trans conductance amplifier both the impedances are infinite and for trans resistance amplifier both the impedances are zero so this is how the input and output impedances are required for uh, this ideal voltage current transconductance and trans resistance amplifiers